But the grave is also empty because he got up in all power.
a holy book, but it is one of the songs that never gets old, especially around this time of the year. Amen. What are we here to celebrate on this morning? Amen. What are we here to celebrate? Amen. If you know that, I know you can help us sing this little simple part.
allowed us to come to your house one more time, oh God. And we just want to tell you thank you, God. Lord, we thank you for how you kept us all week long, oh God. We thank you for your hedge of protection around each and every one of us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, because the blood still works, oh God. We thank you, God, for just being God all by yourself, oh God. We thank you, God, because you got up this morning, oh God, with all power in your hands, oh God. And we just want to tell you, thank you, God. Lord, we just want to tell you, we love you on this day, God. We just want to tell you, God, we appreciate you, oh God. You are worthy of all of our praise, oh God. You're worthy of all the glory, oh God. You are worthy, oh God, on this day, God. And we just want to tell you, we just want to tell you we love you, God. And, oh, God, we ask you to just have your way in this place, oh, God. Don't let it be as church as usual, oh, God. Oh, God, we ask you to come in this house, oh, God. Move by your spirit, oh, God. Speak a word unto your people on this day, oh, God. Oh, God, we need you right now, oh, God. And, oh, God, we need a word from you, oh, God. And, oh, God, we ask you to bless the messenger on this
Jesus, take me through. Amen. Lord Jesus, take me through. Amen. 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 So when I wake up in the morning and I see the bright sunshine, I get glad about it. Amen. Amen. So now, we must believe that this is Resurrection Sunday. Some call it Easter, Resurrection Sunday, but we all know what it means to us. Amen? I heard someone just sing the song, we know that because of this day, because he lives, we know we can face tomorrow. And we know because he lives, all our fear is gone. We know because he made it, we can make it. Amen? Amen? He was mistreated. He was bruised. He was hurt. But we must believe the love story of Jesus because he died. Amen. We can live. And we must understand that while he was waiting to go to the cross during this holy week that we just were in, and even before this, we must know that Jesus was a man that was acquainted with us. Amen. He cried just like we cry. Amen? Amen. He cried. John 11, 35 tells us that Jesus wept. Amen? John 11 also tells us that when he saw Mary coming, crying, and saying, my brother Lazarus is dead, that he was moved with the same human emotions that we have. But he lives. And because he didn't give up, and because he didn't quit, we now have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Somebody said, he, 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 he wouldn't have quit yet. Well, it tells us in the Bible, yes, in Luke 22 and 24, it says that Jesus cried out to his father, if you be willing, if it be possible, remove this bitter cup from me. Mm -hmm. So Jesus also felt like it was becoming a little too much to bear. But he hung in there. And just like we have to do today, we have to hang in there. No matter what's coming our way, we have to hang in there. We have to cry sometime, but we have to hang in there. Easter Sunday commemorates the resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel of Luke 24, chapter the first verse, second and third also reads, now upon the first day of the week, Luke 24, 1, 2, and 3 reads, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, <clears throat> there came unto a sepulcher. And we know sepulcher is like where they bury people like a mausoleum for us today. I would just think of it that way. And these women went to the tomb. And they were bringing spices, which they had prepared to clean up the body. And there was a few others with them. The scripture says they came, who went to the tomb, the mausoleum, the burial place that morning was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Joanna, and a few others. But when they got to the grave, the tomb or the mausoleum, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. So they went inside, even though the stone wouldn't roll away, they went inside, and they did not find the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First of all, it was hard to move those big stones that were guarding the tombs. So when they entered in, they didn't find the body of Jesus. And it came to pass, the scripture says that I just gave you, that as they stood there, they were very perplexed. They were very confused. Behold, there were two men standing in shining garments inside of the tomb. And as the ones that entered, were afraid, the women and those that were with them, they went into the tomb because they were going to take their spices and clean up the body. As they went into the tomb, amen, they were afraid when they saw these two men. 
So they began to bow down their faces toward the earth. And then the two men said unto them, Why seek ye the living amongst the dead? He is not here. Jesus is not here. He is risen. And then the two men said to the women, Remember how he, when he was alive, speaking to you in Galilee, was saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of the of sinful men, and be crucified on the and then on the third day he would rise again. And the scripture says in the eighth verse of that same chapter, then the women remembered his words. My topic for today is don't you remember? I don't need to remind anyone this afternoon about what we are going through as a country, as a state, as a community. We as a nation have some difficult days ahead of us. There's some difficult decisions that are going to have to be made, not only as a country, but there's some personal decisions that we are going to have to address. So I'm not going to stand here this afternoon in denial of the facts. But I do feel that every now and then, no matter what life brings our way, that we need to remind each other that we must believe what Jesus said. We must stand on the promises of God and understand that we are safe in the arms of Jesus. Don't you remember? It is a historical fact that Jesus rose from the dead. It's a historical fact that Jesus was a good teacher. It was a fact that Jesus was the Son of God. And he was equal with God and the Holy Spirit. Some might say, well, I didn't learn that where I went to school. I didn't learn that where I graduated from. Well, a lot of collegiate dictionaries may have left out a few things. And just like you didn't learn all about your black history in school, you might have missed out on this. So don't be surprised that you didn't learn this in the classroom. But the history book that we refer to is called the Bible. And sometimes today we need to remember the days of our history, even as slaves. Our four parents were slaves at one time. Forbidden to get together, forbidden to pray together, forbidden to even learn how to read. Many of us saw the story of Harriet Tubman, where she was part of the creation of an underground railroad. And she decided that nobody is going to keep me or my people from being free and from learning to read and do the things that God wanted us to do. Sometimes I think we need to remember from which we came. We must remember so we don't allow certain things to happen again. In Matthew the 16th chapter, the 21st verse, Jesus predicted his own resurrection. resurrection. He did explain to his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem and he had to suffer many things at the hands of of the elders and the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. But he said, on the third day, I will rise again. So as we revisit these facts, we must understand there are some things today that we must go through. There are some things today that we must endure. The Bible tells us we must endure hardness as a good soldier. There are a lot of things that are just not going to pass us by. But we must remember the teaching of Jesus. We must not let a moment pass that we don't continue under any circumstances to know that God will take care of us. We must remember to pray and understand that we need to pray for what's going on in the land today. I'm going to get back to Easter. Because if you pay attention to what's going on in the land, and as we 
many of us to go around carrying little cards with us. A little card that says whether we're clean or unclean. They can put it that way, but it means the same thing. You have the virus, so you don't. Well, I came to remind you this afternoon that we must remember, otherwise we will allow these things that hurt us in the past to come again. What do you mean by that? Well, whenever it becomes apparent that it's all right for the Easter money to be declared essential, and for the Easter money to be declared an essential worker, amen? Who would have ever thought that we would have lived in a day where the Easter money has permission to pass through, but the church, which is not essential, needs to shut their doors. The church can't even have drive through communions, amen? I don't know how many of you watch the news, but I heard it on CNN and Fox. Oftentimes when I say I heard someone on CNN, someone tells me, well, CNN and Fox don't agree, but they both agreed to this. They both said there was a church in Greenville, I guess, South Carolina, where the pastor was trying to have church in the parking lot. And so the news reported there were about 20 cars pulled up in the parking lot. They were not going into the church building, but they were going to roll down their windows, and the pastor was going to bring a sermon net from his car. Somebody decided that this shouldn't be allowed. It reminds me of a lot of things that happened on yesterday. So the police were called, and I don't know how many of you saw it, but there was more police that showed up at that than they do for a robbery. And one of the officers told the pastor, and they showed this on both channels, CNN and Fox, you don't have the right to have church today. Your rights have been suspended. The pastor who was later interviewed by Fox made a very good point. He said, we understand that the virus is killing people and we understand that we need to be safe. All of us understand that, right? We need to be clean. We need to keep our distance. Ain't that? But he asked the question as he was being interviewed. Well, he actually said, I don't understand why we're able to drive up to a liquor store and pick up our spirits curbside when alcohol killed 86,000 people last year. We must remember. So it came to my mind, we attempt to explain, any, before we attempt to explain anything else, we must hold on to what we believe that everybody needs to know who Jesus is. And we need to hold on to the belief, even though there's some things we can't do right now, we can't be happy about it sitting at home having our dinner and thinking, oh well, they told me to stay home today. Every Christian should be upset today. More than today. Amen. Because we can't come together. But we have good sense. We know we don't have to be in the church to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But we can't get so comfortable with things. Because God so loved the world that he gave his son that we can have a right, amen, to be a part of the family. So I'm concerned that we must remember while everything is focused on one thing, that Jesus came that we might be free, not that we might be bound. Amen? We must remember with everything else that's going on, we have to keep the word of God. Thank God for the media today, the platforms that allow us to keep the word of God going. Because we don't want to forget that 800 people die a year of suicide. That means every 40 seconds, somebody is giving up on life. Suicide is a global phenomenon. Suicide is the second leading cause of death of people between the ages of 15 and 29. Men are four times more likely to commit suicide than women. So what are you trying to say? The two men that were in the tomb said to the women that came to clean up Jesus, or just to freshen him up, whichever way you want to call it. He said, I see you're here and Jesus is going and it looks like you're confused. Well, I came to remind us this afternoon that we cannot get confused. We cannot get distracted. We cannot allow what's going on to make us feel like it's just all right. Some things are never going to be all right. The word of Jesus Christ the gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached. It must be heard. Yes. Amen. 
decision. So I came this afternoon to tell you the facts are still very serious. The facts are some of us are going to lose some loved ones during this time. Those are facts. Amen? Amen. We can't do nothing about that, but we must remember what God said. And we must remember that Christ raised you up. And a lot of us got to remember as Christ was in that grave today, that makes me think about how a lot of us were in graves in our life. Right. We were held down with addictions. We were in graves of confusion. Yes. We were in graves of disparity. Yes. We were in graves of hopelessness. We were in graves of uh, not knowing where our next meal was going to come from. Some of us didn't have a job and didn't know where we were going to get a job. We were in graves with broken marriages. We were in marriages that we wanted to get out of. But remember, I heard someone say she passed on a good friend of ours trouble in my way. I have to cry sometime, but I know Jesus will fix it after a while. You see, I've had some good days, and I've had some hills to climb. I've seen some weary days and I've had some sleepless nights. You know, a lot of times people look at you and say, I've had people say to me, I wasn't always as lucky as you. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know my testimony and you don't know my story. Amen. I never had the privilege of knowing what a grandmother was. Amen. My mother never had the privilege of knowing what a mother was. Amen. But she told me of how she rode on the subways all night long at 12 years old with nowhere to go and nowhere to lay her head but God. But God. Boy, I'm out of there. Yeah. Allowed her to buy her own home. Yeah. Allowed her to have her own businesses. Yeah. Allowed her to have her own licenses. And her and my father owned a, a grocery store together. Amen. Amen. They both were, he was a barber, she was a beautician, but she was other things. And my mother was looking at everything. And then she came from riding that subway to be that to go to Hawaii and all over the world. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. So you don't know the story. But in that she taught us never depend on anybody. God will take care of you. Be not dismayed whatever betimes. God will take care of you. Don't go around looking like a beggar. But pick your I 
side. Amen? But when we are able to run again, Sister Laura, when we're able to jump again, amen, when we are able, when we are cut free and let loose, I think we need to come into the services for the next few months, and the music should be playing, and the choir should be singing, and the drums should be going, and we should come into the house of the Lord with our hands up saying, thank you, Jesus. I saw a picture of myself and Miss B. And we were saying, walk around heaven all day. And I had just talked to her. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put this out there. Miss B, you and I have been through a lot of things the last year and a half, but looks like we made it. Well, it didn't go out there with us singing the song, but the words went out there. Amen. <laughs> looks like we made it. So some people, they were nice. They put a little light on it. Amen. But I was trying to say, when we were singing a year and a half ago, we didn't know what we were going to have to go through. Right. But look at God. We made it. Yes. Things we didn't think we were going to be able to make it in, we made it. Amen. Amen. And we thank God that we can remember. And we must keep in mind that this is still God's day. Amen. And I believe God is in the midst of this. Because out of this, he's going to get some of the greatest evangelists. Amen. Yes. Some of the greatest missionaries. Yes. Amen. Out of this, people, people are not going to even walk. I think we're going to probably walk by the people on the street and think twice. Amen. About not giving them something to eat. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because such could be some of us. Right. Amen. Right. Everybody's not out there by choice. We know some are. But since we're not God and we don't know which is which, we have to be merciful Amen. and loving Amen. and kind. All right. And remember, when you didn't have no food, yes. don't you hate to see somebody when they get on their feet, they get nuts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. I remember a, a young man, Amen, back in the day that um, somebody took in, Amen. And he was sleeping on somebody's sofa. He had nowhere to go. I think six of them were sleeping on the sofa and the person was charging them a month's rent for that. And when this brother got out of that situation, got a better place, got a car, he would ride up and down the road and make the statement, I don't just pick up anybody mm -hmm. in my car. Amen? Mm -hmm. Don't forget don't where the Lord brought you from. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget that you're able to even pass your classes. Some people can't do that. Amen? Right, right. Don't forget that you're able to remember and learn. Everybody can't do that. Right. So we need to be thankful and compassionate and grateful and understanding when it comes to others. Amen. That's what Jesus did. Jesus said to his father, we always make this story line. The father of God was upset because he had made man and man was acting up. Amen? So God didn't know we make it up. God didn't know what he was going to do about it. And Jesus, with his compassion inside, said, I'll go to hell, Father, and I will die for the sins of the world. So he came down and died for us. But within him, even doing the will of his Father, he had the one to do it. We got to want to love people to love them. Yes, that's right. Amen? Amen. You can't just get them and say, I'm going to do it. No, it don't work that way. Amen? We got to know where God has brought us by and keep in mind that such was some of us. And had it not been for today, which is Resurrection Sunday, so would some of us yet be. So we must be grateful and remember. And as the two men sat in the tomb to Mary and her friends that were there, don't you remember? Keep in mind, Jesus had told them that he was going to die and have to be and, and raise up. And a lot of times we know what God said, but we forget. We tend to forget. But we must remember who we are and what God has done for us. And know that what he's done for us, he'll do for others. Amen? Amen. We're not special. You didn't do nothing special to get where you are. Amen? Amen. God just granted you his favor. Yes. And you've got to be thankful for his favor. Amen? Amen? Now, I'm not talking about, don't get crazy and go 
out here and pick up everybody. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Women got to be careful. Men got to be careful today too. Amen. Amen. But it ought to be in your heart to want to do the right thing. Because he lives, we can live. Because he came, and look how long he taught. He tried to teach. He tried to help the people to see why he had come for. Even though they didn't accept it, even on the cross, he was like, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How many of us say that today when somebody's doing us wrong? Amen? Well, what we say is wrong. Look, perception is very important. Amen? Sometimes they're not doing us wrong. They're doing us right because we done did wrong. Amen? Amen? But our perception is we were right and they were wrong. But we have to understand that God had mercy on us. God loved us. And that's why we celebrate today. Go ahead and say, everyone, just stand on your feet at this time. I said, pray for me. One another. Do this and pass this everywhere because this is very new, amen, to some of us, amen. And we want to be obedient to the laws of the land, amen. Sometimes it's a little difficult, amen. But God will grant us the strength, the wisdom, and what we need. But what's so important about today is this is the day. And this is the time that if you do not know Christ as your Savior, now is the time. All you have to do, the Bible says, is believe in your heart that Christ died. Confess with your mouth and accept. Amen. Yeah. 